Oh, hi. <laughs> um, this is the movie wrap-up for December, and i got to be honest, I did not watch that much. I didn't even watch any of my Christmas movies yet. Oh, well, maybe I did. Um, no, I didn't. I watched my niece's Christmas gift. <laughs> I watched Harem Scarum, an Elvis movie. Um, I don't think I'd actually remember when this was made. Is this 1965? I don't know whether it's the truth or not. This is 1965. Um, didn't he die in the like 70s or 80s? Yeah, it was 70s. It was 70s. I almost forgot for a second. It's in somewhere in the 70s. Go East, young man, sings showbiz star and martial arts whiz Johnny Tyrone. To hear is to obey a clan clandestine group called the Assassins kidnaps Johnny and whisk him to a remote Arab Arabian realm isolated from the world for 2,000 years. Sheik meets desert chick cheek when Elvis pl Presley plays Johnny and teams with former Miss America Mary Ann Mobley, Presley's girl happy co-star in this tuneful frolic shot on the original 1925 Cecil D. B. DeMille set from Kings of Kings and directed by mu movie musical veteran Gene Nelson. The kidnappers want Johnny to use his fighting finesse to kill a desert king. Johnny the Hitman? No, he's a hit man. A top singer of songs like Kismet, Harem, Harem Holiday, and Nine More, all part of the jamming, swashbuckling fun of Harem Scarum. And it has some Elvis Presley trailer gallery. That's the only special feature on this. This one's actually funny. And then I watched Enough, uh, Everyone Has a Limit, made in 2002, at least I think it was, it's the only number, that's the only year I see on here, uh, working class waitress Slim thought she was enter entering a life of domestic bliss when she married Mitch. The man of her dreams, after the arrival of the first child, her picture-perfect life is shattered when she discovers Mitch's hidden, possessive dark side, a controlling and abusive alter ego that can turn trust, love, and tranquility into terror. Terrified for her child's safety, Slim flees with her daughter, relentless in his pursuit in enlisting the aid of a of lethal henchman, Mitch continually stalks the prey that was once his family. Finally, Slim is forced to fight back, engaging Mitch in a physical and psychological battle, showing him that she's had enough. Jennifer Lopez delivers an electrifying performance as a new breed of action hero and director Michael Aptid's harrowing hive-style thriller hit. I'm trying to see if any of these are worth showing. Just a music video, trailer, filmographies, and that's it. I think the only music video is her music video that she did on there. I can't remember their name. Then I read a lot, read, watched Friday 13 Part 3 in 3D. Uh, made in 1982. It says it comes with a pair of. 3D glasses. I think it. I don't remember how many pairs it was supposed to come with, but I think I got them all. Oops. Yeah, it was just a pair or two. See, they look like um his mask. Wow, they're just tangled up into each other. Give me a minute. They wouldn't go in because they were they're all tangled up into each other. I did have them in plastic, but the plastic ripped. Um, meet Jason in a whole new dimension. 
It's Spine Tingling Horror in a Whole New Dimension. It's Friday the 13th, Part 3, 3D, Deluxe Edition, comes to DVD. A carefree summer becomes a deadly nightmare for another group of naive counselors who choose to ignore Camp Crystal Lake's gruesome legacy. They find themselves in blood in a bloody game of cat and mouse with the maniacal man, man, Jason, who stalks their every move and ruthlessly, ruthlessly kills them off one by one. Actually, they weren't even counselors in this. They were um, there in one of the cabins that belonged to her parents or something. They, she wasn't a counselor. She was just visiting there. Actually, all of them were. And if I'm mistaken, this doesn't have not one special feature. I'm not sure because it does not tell me. I can't remember right off when I watched Friday 13 Part 4, final chapter. Is it? Yeah, I'm pretty sure this is 4. Uh, Jason meets his match. Prepare yourself as evil comes back to life in Friday the 13th, the final chapter, deluxe edition. After Crystal Lake massacres, Jason is pronounced dead and taken to the hospital morgue where he is mysteriously revived allowing his diabolical killing spree to continue at the camp where the gruesome slaughtering began. But this time, in addition to terrified teenagers, he meets a young boy named Tommy Jarvis who has a special talent for horror ma masks and makeup, leading up to a horrifying bloody battle that will keep you on the edge of your seat as the diabolical Jason finally met his match. That was a special feature, by the way. Wait, did I actually tell you when that was made? I don't think I did. I think this was made in 1984. And then... Jason X. Evil gets an upgrade. <sighs> made in 2002. If you're looking for terror, here comes a perfect 10. In the year... 2455 and on a routine training mission a team of students is about to learn a terrifying lesson through the years Jason Voorhees has claimed over 200 victims now the legendary killer from Crystal Lake is back hurtling through space and hunting new prey Jason X is a nerve shredding thriller loaded with spectacular special effects high-tech weapons and a new way and new ways to die my favorite character throughout the whole movie was her the Robot woman. And I'll just go ahead and just show you. I'm trying to get it so it can all get in there. I hope you guys can see this. I watched. <laughs> Give me a minute. Okay. Then I watched Blood and Chocolate. A werewolf tale, a secret to keep, a legacy to defend. Made in 2007. A werewolf tale from the producers of Underworld, Blood and Chocolate, tells the tale of Vivian, a young teenage girl who must choose between her love for a young artist and loyalty to her werewolf, werewolf lineage. Others may have secrets, but none as extraordinary as Vivian. One of the last of her kind, she comes from a line of loop, guru, shapeshifters, able to transform into the form of both human and wolf at will. When Vivian's affections for a young, for a visiting artist threatened to reveal her family's secret society, she must decide whether to follow her heart or betray the secret vows of her family. We watched New Nightmare. Let's Craven New Nightmare. Uh, made in 1994. I'm just going to try to pick up where...
Life imitated art during filming. Soon after shooting an earthquake sequence, the Northwich quake shook Los Angeles, says Craven. Wait, okay, wait. This one does not tell me anything on the back. Trying to make sure mine was all on top. This one's just basically where it does not tell me. I'm not reading that because it's not mentioning the movie at all, I think. Except mentioning that Heather Langenkamp and uh, John Sa Saxon and Robert England all are reunited to end this movie, which, yes, is the truth. It actually has them playing fake versions of themselves uh, where Heather Langenkamp's son is uh, trying to be like be possessed by Freddy where Freddy is wanting to take over her son's body or life or whatever and it's not my fault that this lighting is terrible let me see look normal skin color and everything and right when I do this boom it gets bright that's not how I really look but um and I don't know why it's doing that. But. Yeah, it's got. This one's. This one's okay. I like it. I'm trying to think. Which one do I like the most? I like four and five a lot better. Them two are my favorite out of the whole series. But I like this one too. And I can't help. Oh, wait. Let me, special features. Almost forgot. Well, because it. And I'm mad because my nephew got a hold of my part one. I finally found it. And part one, I'm going to buy it again. I'm mad because my mom bought me these before, way before she died. It was like years before she died. So I had them forever, and my nephew got a hold of my Nightmare on the Street Part 1, and I had to put it in this. And yeah, I watched this too. I wanted to make sure it still worked, because it was, he messed it up a little bit, i got to say. And yeah, I have to read about it again. I'm getting the, um, I can't find another, what is it called again? Snapper cases. I can't find another one of them by itself, like somebody selling it by itself, so I had to end up getting an Invenafilm version, which I don't really care, as long as I get the movie, I don't really care what version it is, because this is, I like part one, I like them all, but part four or five is my favorite, but part one is basically just the beginning of it all, uh, Nancy, Glenn, Tina, and I'm trying to remember his name. I know it's it's a Rod. Is it Rod? Four friends basically trying to figure out why they're having the same dreams. Um, trying to fight against Freddy. I think the first one to get killed is Tina. I think. <laughs> yeah. And uh, Nancy having to fight. Freddy in order to stay alive and it's so hard for me to describe this movie. Freddy's just basically this dream stalker ghost in a way of a dude who hurt kids, did stuff to them that, and I gotta be honest, they never really, in the old ones anyways, they never really told you what he did to them except he hurt them, like killed them. But he didn't actually, they may, never mentioned that he molested him or anything like that. Um, I'm trying to think. Let me think more better. Um, oh no, the battery's going dead. I better hope I can have enough battery life to do this. 
I don't remember if this thing has any special features, but I'm pretty sure it has like filmographies on um, on all of them. And basically what the not new nightmare had, I think this one had it too. Um, and I'm just gonna have to do this because it's upside down. Uh, and it's so hard for me to describe this movie about, but if you, I think everybody's ever seen Nightmare on Elm Street. I'm not gonna sit here for like 50 minutes just trying to tell you about the movie. Then I watched Christmas with the Cranks. You must see other Christmas movies, even though it's not Christmas. I did watch this on Christmas, though. Uh, made in 2004. No, 2005. 2004 or 5. Um, when their only daughter, Blair, leave the family nest, Luther and Nora Crank decide to book an island cruise to beat the Yuletide Blues and just skip the holidays, but their decision to boycott tradition has the whole neighborhood in an uproar. When Blair calls on Christmas Eve to announce a surprise visit with her new fiancé, the Cranks have just 12 hours to perform a miracle and pull themselves and their neighbors together to throw at the best celebration ever. And, uh, this does not show me any special features, which I'm not mistaken. This doesn't have any. And I borrowed two, well, I borrowed three, but still haven't gotten around to watching Crystals. Uh, other one. Uh, I'll just go ahead and show my nieces. This is what she got for Christmas, by the way. Pet, uh, the Secret Life of Pets. Wonder what they do all day. This was actually really, really funny. My favorite character on the whole movie is her and that bunny. I think it was made in 2015 or 16. 16. I couldn't remember for a minute. Comedy superstars Louis C.K., Eric Stone Street, and Kevin Hart uh, make their animated feature film debut that finally answers the questions: What do you, what do your pets do when you're not at home? When their owners leave for the day, pets from the building gossip with their friends, satisfy their sweet tooths, and throw outrageous parties. But when a pampered terrier and his unruly new roommate from the pound get lost in the urban jungle of New York City, they must put aside their differences to survive the epic journey back home. It's got three mini movies, but I can't remember what they were. All about the pets. Animals can talk, meet the actors, hairstylists, to the dogs, the best of Snowball, and more. It's special features. I just decided to tell you because I'm worried about the battery. And then I watched Blood, the Last Vampire. This is Crystals. Just want to make sure. Uh, made in 2009. From the producer of Hero and Crouching Tiger, Hidden Dragon, comes Blood, the Last Vampire, based on the cult hit anime series. Demons have infested Earth, and only one warrior stands between them, the dark... Between, sorry, between the dark and the light. Saya, a half-human, half-vampire samurai who preys on those who feast on human blood, joining forces with the shadowy society known as the Council. Saya is dispatched to an American military base, when an intense series of sword fights leads her to the deadliest vampire of all, and now after 400 years, Saya's greatest hunt is about to begin. Can anybody tell me why they didn't make another one of these yet? Like, what, did everybody hate it or something? I mean, I actually enjoyed it. I want them to make a new one. Because I want to see, like, is she actually going to come back to our, our side and team up with that girl again that becomes her friend? I kind of wish that they would make one like that, or she helps her escape from that institution or something. And this wasn't even that long of a movie. That's all I watched right now. I'm planning on watching um, that Mark and Jay part 2, now that I've got the laptop. And, um, well, that's all I'm really planning on watching right now. I mean, I might watch other movies too, but I don't know yet. And that's all I have watched. Oh, by the way, if you're wondering what I'm talking about, it's... if you haven't seen my other video, I'm planning on watching that. 
haven't watched it yet. Yeah, I'm not. Yeah, I think it's, that's all that I have watched. Now they're actually separating them because they make me lean. So, bye.